Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to a brand new Jurassic World Evolution 2 video. In today's video we finally have the announcement trailer for the prehistoric marine species pack that you've probably already seen right at the start of this video. Something we were expecting considering we did actually get a little teaser towards it yesterday. And uh, one creature we definitely thought was going to be in this pack is not in this pack, <laughs> as expected. I did want to try and not rustle some feathers and try to manage expectations. We all thought a Megalodon was going to appear in Jurassic World Evolution 2. Unfortunately, that's not the case. However, what we did get in its replacement is still pretty, pretty cool. So what we are going to go ahead and do right now is basically break down the announcement trailer, see what we can find, and then go into more details about uh, these new species and what we know so far, a little bit of speculation here and there, and um, a little bit of update 7, which we'll have to wait and see. We'll get a bit more information about that tomorrow. But starting off this prehistoric species marine DLC announcement trailer, <laughs> uh, we go straight down into the depths where we get to see our first marine creature. And this would be the Shonisaurus, I believe it's called. Uh, it just looks like a really large Ichthyosaurus, which is pretty cool. We only really get to see the face at this point in time uh, before we quickly and swiftly move on to my absolute favorite one, considering you guys know how big my channel is, thanks to Camp Cretaceous. The Nophosaurus. Yep, Nophosaurus is appearing in this pack. Now, they can't, this it's annoying because it kind of blows my idea of having a Camp Cretaceous DLC 2 idea, or an expansion pack, out of the water because I was hoping that Nophosaurus would be part of it, it would be fantastic if it were, uh, but unfortunately it's not. However, when we do take a look at the Nophosaurus that we do see in the trailer, it's practically identical to what we see in Camp Cretaceous. The model is 99% accurate, so I'm not complaining too much. Uh, they might just be trying to include this species in this DLC, where hopefully the next Camp Cretaceous expansion means that we'll still have only four species, uh, because I believe that only five of them were left out. So this might narrow it down to four species and make more sense. Either way, the Nophosaurus looks incredible. Definitely one of my favorite ones, and uh, I can't wait to have it in my park. After this, we move on to the Dunkleosis. I think that's how you say it. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. And this is what we thought originally was the Megalodon. Uh, you can understand why. It's basically got tail fins, it's got a dorsal fin, uh, and it, it's big and chunky, like a Megalodon. So, understandably, we thought Dunkleosis was going to be a Megalodon. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we, ha we had to lower expectations in my previous video, so uh, not many people got too disappointed in case a Megalodon didn't show up. So yeah, as, as I did have some sort of suspicions, uh, Megalodon was not added into this DLC. But instead, Dunkleos this, and I'm not really going to complain too much. The next thing we have is the prehistoric turtle. I believe it's called Archelon? Archelion? I, I, I don't really know how to pronounce it, so please tell me down in the comments how to pronounce this gorgeous looking creature. Uh, this is definitely a creature I've heard about before, same with the other three. I didn't really hear about Shonisaurus before. But it's definitely a creature I'm very happy to see, but what you guys might not be aware of, or shall I say what you guys can probably be aware of, because it's quite obvious, uh, these guys can actually come above water and stay on these rock platforms, which are incredible. And uh, you just have to wait and see, because we have some more information about that. Another species will be able to use it as well. And um, hopefully there's different variations of it. Now, the trailer didn't really show off too much, because, you know, at the end of the day, it's mainly just the purpose to showcase these new species. But when we go to the official Jurassic World Evolution 2 website, we can start to get a little bit more information about this DLC, about these creatures, and a little bit about Update 7 as well. Give your guests an unforgettable underwater experience with four new marine species. House gentle giants, prehistoric reptiles, and powerful armored predators into your lagoons. The first one being the Archelon, which we have a brand new image here right now. And when we do take a look at the image, correct me if I'm wrong since I haven't played Evolution 2 for quite a while, but that's a view and dome in the background, right? A brand new view and dome, an underwater view and dome, which is what we've been wanting for quite some time for this game. Uh, so it's nice that this is going to be confirmed. Whether or not this will be part of the DLC or it will be part of the update 7 is another question. I hope for the sake of other people who don't want to purchase this DLC that this uh, underwater view and dome will actually be part of the update 7 instead. So hopefully that's going to be the case, fingers crossed that is, uh, because it's a unique and quite cool feature that loads of people have been wanting for quite a while now. But yes, the Archelon is here. There's a reason that Archelon's name means Ruler Turtle. Thought to have lived in the late Cretaceous period, Archelon remains the largest turtle ever discovered. With giant flippers, Archelon was a fast swimmer, which is bound to make it breathtaking addition for your guests. Fast swimmer. I'll be very intrigued to see his death animation with a Mosasaurus. <laughs> see how fast that guy can swim. 
Next up, we have a brand new showcase of the Dunkleosteus. We can see the viewing dome in the background slightly again through the murky water. Um, there is a shipwreck. I know that they added similar things in. I'm not too sure if that model is new or not, so somebody will have to correct me down in the comments below. But Dunkleosteus is here, sporting a massive, sharpened jaw. This powerful, armored fish was one of the most intimidating of its time. The voracious predator could soon be stalking your lagoons, for better or worse. And yeah, look at that tail. <laughs> you can understand why we thought this was the Megalodon originally. Now, I'm not complaining, you know, I, I don't really think that Megalodon fits the aesthetic of Jurassic World Evolution 2. Uh, nonetheless, Dunkleosteus definitely does. It just looks awesome. It's a big fuck off prehistoric predator and fish, shall we say. Like, who doesn't want that? It's armored, for Christ's sake. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I'm not complaining. I really do like the model of it. I love the design of it and just looks fantastic. But not as good as probably my favorite one on this list. You guys already know, the Nophosaurus. Look at those teeth. This nimble, distinctive predator roamed the shores of late Triassic, propelling itself forward with webbed feet. With a bioluminescent skin also available, your guests won't be able to take their eyes away from this incredible species. So there you go. A skin is bioluminescent for the Nophosaurus, which is great because I believe only the Styxosaurus has a bioluminescence when it comes to marine species. So adding Nophosaurus in there, fantastic. But taking a look at the model, Man oh man is it so identical to Camp Cretaceous. Hopefully it's updates in the uh, database does say it comes from Camp Cretaceous because it's it's the same thing. It looks incredible. It doesn't look like a Nophosaurus but it looks like a Jurassic World variant of Camp Cretaceous that we do see for the Nophosaurus. I, I'm trying to make this make sense to you guys but it just looks Jurassic World-esque and I love it. I really really do. My only hope since we haven't seen it so far is that one of its skin patterns matches exactly what we see from Camp Cretaceous because bit by bit we're getting the canon species almost 100% complete in Jurassic World Evolution 2, which would be awesome. Just, just imagine a canonical species park. Oh, I'm, I'm doing that. Best in slot, Evolution Square. Don't take that from me. <laughs> Next up, we have Shonisaurus. With a notably rotund frame, Shonisaurus was the graceful giant of the late Triassic period. With only a long, skinny snout, the Shonisaurus would rely on its size to fend off would-be predators. And it looks cool. I don't really know what more to say. It, it looks like a herbivorous Tylosaurus, if that makes any sense. Again, the platform in the background. Uh, yeah, Shonisaurus just looks like a hybrid between the Tylosaurus and the Ichthyosaurus. I'm probably not giving it its due credit, which some people would absolutely love this creature for. Um, but to me, not too excited. So if we were to rank them based off of my first impressions, uh, my favorite would definitely be Nophosaurus, then Dunkleosteus, and then it'll be Archelon, and then it will be Shonisaurus. But that's not all. Obviously, you guys did see that these Archelons can go onto the rock, and with an image right here, we can see them on the rock resting. These are brand new Lagoon rock platforms. Now, whether or not these will be part of the DLC or the update is another question. However, the only information we have is that Archelon and Nophosaurus are the only species that can actually rest on here so far. Whether or not any of the other species from different DLCs or the base game can rest on this rock is a completely different question. Uh, if they can't, then I would assume that this rock platform would basically be for the DLC only, rather than Update 7. But then again, it is an aesthetic, so maybe it is going to be part of Update 7. We just have to wait and see. And talking of which, they have some very exciting features coming in Update 7, which is free to all Jurassic World Evolution 2 players, including quality of life changes and bug fixes. So they aren't really going to go in too much detail about them. However, they do mention that tomorrow, Friday, August 4th, They'll be releasing a video more about Update 7, so we'll be doing a breakdown on that as well, and finding out some more details about this Update 7. But yeah, that's everything pretty much covered. We did a trailer breakdown, we looked at all of the brand new images. Should anything else release in the meantime, feel free to head on over to my Twitter account, or shall I say X account for some reason, where we post these updates immediately as the information does drop. You can find a link in the description. But if you're excited for this DLC, and subscribe if you are new around here to stay up to date on all of the information regarding Jurassic World Evolution 2. But most importantly, all I ask for from you guys today is to make sure you're all staying safe out there. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye bye. Hello, hi, you. Did you enjoy the video? Just a little reminder to press that like button and also subscribe. I just want to thank my Patreons for this month on screen right here as giving me that little extra support really does go a long way. But anyways, I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day.